right. Sorry, I thought you were looking for a, a mic check. Yeah, that works. Does so, that work? Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> I guess we'll just get right into it. Welcome, this is uh, Two Brains, One Bottle. This is uh, episode four, as yet untitled. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. And we are so thankful that you're here. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and for uh, joining us. Is this four or five? This is four. You sure? I edited them. All right. Yep. You know more than I do. Uh, only on this. Because I know nothing. <laughs> okay, Colonel Clink. I know nothing. Speak. Colonel Mustard. So. In the library. With. With the wrench. You're welcome. It's never, you said you led with. I know, but you it, led with. It's never with the wrench. When it you, is with the wrench, when Colonel you, Mustard. When you play with Clue, it, it just never ends up being the wrench. I've played it. There was mustard on the wrench. Okay, anyway. And rust. Right. You can't. You can't spell rust without mustard. No, you can't spell mustard without rust. That's what I said. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Don't lie to me. You can't spell rust without mustard, though. Like you have yeah, all you the you have all the letters of mustard. They have all the letters. And you have of extra rust. Le then you have extra letters left so over. So what? So what if you? Have it's like remainders. Remainders don't remain important in your fucking uh, schooling. Criminy, I need a drink. We're all doing this. we're all doing new bullshit, new math now. Oh, I need a drink. Damn you! Curse you and your weird Oregon-based logic. So, for those of you just joining us who maybe... Oh, fuck a jock. Sorry. Wow. It's... Is that whole thing metal? Jesus it feels like it. Christ. So... That's brass. For those of you just joining us, we're revisiting... Fuck. We're revisiting a whiskey that we tried oh. last uh, episode called Frey Ranch, or maybe Fry Ranch. It's F-R-E-Y. Oh, God. And we love this thing. That'll hurt somebody. You can brain someone with this... this that talker will hurt. Yeah, right? Uh, it weighs a ton. Uh, um, Give us I wonder notes. if the, I wonder if that's the uh, the same brass as the as the front. Yeah, I wouldn't see why not. I don't see why not. But yeah, Oof. If, Oof. even down that's to the a bottom, hefty bitch. we are just this. This thing is constantly surprising us. The more you leave it to sit in a glass, it's amazing. So Fry Ranch, Frey Ranch, whatever. It's based out of Fallon, Nevada, Nevada. I just smacked myself for that. Sorry, uh, and. Everything is in Fallon, Nevada. It's grown, distilled, matured, and bottled on the Fry Ranch or Frey Ranch. 90 proof. Um, give us the, the cliff notes rundown of the notes. It, it's a lot to unpack, but lowland, it's all good. Lowland berry notes mm. with a lot of emaciated sugars and brown sugar. Not a whole lot of citrus to it. But not a whole lot of sharp spice notes to it on the nose. Then you move on to the palate and it flips 180 degrees and you get a ton of citrus, baking spices, nutmeg, mm -hmm. cinnamon. Everything is balanced though. A little bit of sugar, but it all fills in the gaps of where the other one left behind openings. And the one in front of left opportunities for the previous notes to come through. It's really masterfully done. Yeah, and this is batch one. This is batch number one. They out coming out of the game gate swinging hard. They know what they're doing over 45%, there. Forty-five percent, ninety proof. Really, really, just well done, well crafted. Yeah, um, it's fifty bucks at Lee's Discount Liquor. I don't know what it'll be uh, here in Vegas. Here in Vegas, this is all regional pricing, by the way. Yep, um, nothing, nothing to say about national pricing. They, they make a, a straight rye, which I believe was seven dollars more, and they make, I believe, a select barrel version, which I don't know the price of. It was um, spoken of highly by the person who spoke of highly of this. I'm glad I listened to them because, man, this is like this is my new favorite bourbon. I dare say. I don't know, I, I don't know about you, and um, it's certainly up there in the top three. If I had to drink a bourbon as a main, it would be that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, but I I choose to drink scotch over bourbon. Well, okay, fair enough. But yes, if we're talking just bourbons, that yeah, is that, yeah. that takes the cake. So takes the cake. Ah, father. But speaking of Nevada, oh, the last episode, we went over a few uh, weird, stupid laws that are still in the books for various states. Sean picks them, and I let him know what they are. All right, let's do California. Let's get it out of the way. All right. Come on. So California. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do some, we'll do oh, some bigger oh, states. Oh, oh, California, the state with a bear on the flag. Yeah, start me off. 
Animals are banned from make, mating publicly within yeah. 1,500 feet of a tavern, school, school or, or place of worship. Yep. I'm sorry, a tavern? You'd be like, yeah! Place of worship. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Place of worship. Pla no, school. Pla no, place of worship is the hardest to enforce because they're all typically around trees because religious people like to be secluded. Fair You're enough. welcome. Fair enough. Next, let's go to, oh, let's go past the one I skipped earlier, Washington. Washington. Whoops. I wouldn't I wouldn't even try to do a Christopher Walken voice against me. I wasn't. I was just but you, I was you just almost, saying you almost went there. Sorry. Washington. Wow. Wow. If if you said guess what weird law is still on the books in Washington, no one would guess this. X rays may not be used to fit shoes. <laughs> right? Um, for those of you listening this holds a special place in my heart because my dad was an x-ray radiologist, an x-ray reader for 47 years. And I used to manage a shoe store. <laughs> and let me tell you, when they x-ray your foot, <coughs> uh, they take your shoe off. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. If you break your foot with your shoe on, Ooh. they got to cut that fucking shoe off or they gotta pull it off over your broken foot. Here's the thing, Ooh. always trust them to cut the shoe off. Yeah. It hurts, it hurts so much. so much to have them pull it off around your broken bones. Please don't do it. It hurts so fucking much. I've had it happen to my hand because I was a dumbass and punched a cement wall one time. Hey, I've done that. And my hand did not win. <laughs> no, mine didn't and either. But I, I didn't never break it. healed right, and that's an issue. Yeah, I've uh, I have oh. left a fist size imprint in drywall because I was so pissed at something. You notice how I have three knuckles? <laughs> yep. And then one just kind of like is doopy. <laughs> yep. Notice mine are very similar to yours. Cause boys are dumb. <laughs> boys are fucking idiots. Oh. Yeah, I have a 13-year-old daughter, and man, boys are dumb, but... We hit such hard stuff, and, and don't think about how it's going to affect us. Years down the line. Oh, you want to be a drummer? What's that? You want to be a drummer, you say? Hey, by the way, this has nothing to do with my carpal tunnel or tendonitis, because those are entirely different factors, yeah. and they all suck. Um, go ahead, throw me another one. Let me get a good one. Let and me get a, let me, does let me, your state have any weird laws? Let us know in the comments. I Arizona, love hearing this. Arizona. Arizona? Arizona. <laughs> okay. Uh, last episode, I finished off with the fact that Nevada, it is, dildos are, no, sex toys are prohibited. Right? Owning them, I believe. Supposed to be. Yeah, supposed to be. Sex. It just says sex supposed toys are to outlawed. Be it just says they're outlawed. Not even like owning them or selling them, just supposed to be. Well, that's so in Arizona, strange. it is illegal to promote the use of or own more than six dildos. Is that because they have a two per hole limit? I guess. Like literally it's only a limit. Who needs or, more? Or, than or is it a two per hole limit for women and three per is that hole per limit party? for men? <laughs> is that like what if you have unless them? men like sounding, and then if you oh, like the sounding, no. then then you you know maybe you'll have six in one, half a dozen of another. You're welcome. I don't ever 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 don't ever do. want to make that joke again. Let it be don't. the only time I ever do it. Do I yourself will never a favor. If you that. don't know what sounding is, do not don't do it. look it up. Don't look it up. But as it turns out, it sounds like a bad idea. It is. Uh, as it turns out, I did an interview with uh, the Midnight Disease, who his other project is called Sounding. I was like, so why would you, you know, call it Sounding? And then he proceeded to explain what Sounding was, and I guess I... Oh, for... Yeah, and he said, and our music kind of does that to, to people's brains. And I was like, wow. No, it doesn't. Nope. No, it doesn't. Nope. I'll tell you what. 
put it in front of me and I'll give you a does it sound me. Oh, there you, there you go. <gasps> hey, hold on. What? There's an audio review uh, uh, title for you. Does it sound me? Does it sound me? Does it sound? Oh. Does it sound me? So sound as a verb. And does it sound me? As an adjective. As, or, as and a, does it describe yeah. my sound in correlation? I'm sorry, no, as, a, as an adjective and as a verb. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's right. deep, brother. Right? Oh, there you go. Put, put a pin in that. Future Josh, when you're editing. Cut that out. <laughs> Please cut the money-making ideas out. <laughs> money-making ideas. Yeah, just, just, just giving, you, giving you a cue. Okay. Uh, why don't we finish with South Carolina? Because let's go... Oh, no. Let's go to North Dakota. North Dakota? Okay. North Dakota. <laughs> Dakota. Oh no, I'd be in trouble. Oh shit. That's always what you want to hear. One may, well think, what do I usually wear on stage and on most of my videos? In North Dakota? Um, hats? Yes. One may be jailed for wearing a hat while dancing or even for wearing a hat to a function where dancing is taking place. Now, is this a previous law or is this well, These are all just old stupid laws that are still in the books. That's all. They're still in there? They're literally from idiotlaws.com or, or you know, dumblaws.com. So they're still in the... the as man's. far as I know, yes. When I, and when I think North Dakota, I think cowboy hats, right? Aren't there cowboys? North Dakota? Am I wrong? No, I think you're right. Just it's like it's it's old timey North Dakota. Yeah. It's like it's it I don't know. I don't I don't know what's going on in Presho. And I'm just maybe saying, South if Dakota. I, did, I don't know. If I'm I did so a, bad at fucking my Dakotas. What if you're my in, Dakotas? But what if what if a hat is part of your stage wear and you play a gig there? I I are you breaking I don't the know. Law I never, people dance? I, I've honestly I've never been to night I've never been to either Dakota and my mother's from South Dakota. Okay. And okay. I don't have any inkling to go to South Dakota, but dear God, if you're from South Dakota and you have a bitchin' bar that you want to show off, I will come there and-, <laughs> and I'll take a hit for the and, team. And do it. I will, I will come there and interview you. All right. I will do it. I will bite the bullet. Can we finish with South Carolina? I, you, you I have, have a real reason. thing, yeah. I have a reason. I'm, oh, shit. Is it going to fuck with me and my beer me. drinking? No. All right. It, I'm leading into the thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Because my... Um, a part of this podcast is people send us questions, and uh, we try to answer them. Our question today comes from South Carolina. So I thought I'd lead in, see? I'm, I'm, I'm giving them a glimpse behind this, the, the curtain. But don't cry. It's okay. I'm also pretty tired. I'm I know. just wiping dust out of my eyes. Well, in South Carolina, a person must be 18 years old to play a pinball machine. <laughs> confusion, yes. Anger. Yeah. Not confusion. Furiosity. Well, that, uh, ha that uh, ball has to have been broken so many times. By the time you're 18, everything's broken. Okay. There we go. So There's the joke. I reached out to some various people I know, and this is Zach from South Carolina. Zach from South Carolina, how you doing, my friend? I hope you're doing well, I hope this message <laughs> finds you well, and I hope that this question isn't too hard, but I can tell by the interpretation <laughs> of the laughter and the sound that I am barking up the wrong tree and biting off more than I can chew, so let's go with it. Go with it. So Zach from South Carolina says... Oh, fuck. I already hate you. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Wow, but... that, you flipped on that quick. Yeah, because you're, <laughs> you're prefacing it so shittily. Well, first of all, he told me... Fuck. about a, He told me about a cool app called Clued Up. You ever hear of it? No. Well, it's, it's kind of like a date idea kind of thing. It's an app, and it tells it's a murder mystery, but you, it's around your city. You, it's like Clue, but oh, it's around your city, and you go and you go follow Nash, the app. Landmark, okay. And it's, it's like, like a, it's a, like a Pokemon. A, thing but you you do it like clue. as a group. And apparently, yeah. it's like fifty two bucks for a group or something. It's, seems reasonable for you know. Is it like a Pokemon AR thing? I, I told him so. It's like Clue Go, or it's you know, it's like Murder Mystery Go. He's like, yeah, kind of okay. sort of cool. So I was like, fucking cool. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Let's do that. That's this episode's not not who, sponsored. Who are we inviting to that? Right. Well, oh, I'm definitely inviting but, Allison. She's so fucking handy with that shit. But Zach, oh no, says death. Why does it suck? As I get older, I start to think about it more and more. What do you think happens when we die? And why do I keep thinking about it more and more as I get older? <laughs> I was like, wow. Way they hit me with the deep one, dude. <laughs> so, first of all, Zach, what you're, consi what you're uh, thinking about, what you're feeling, uh, the name your, for it is... Your own, your own mortality. Thanatophobia. Named after Thanatos. Greek god Thanos. of death. Thanos. Nope, Thanatos. No. Yes. I'm go uh, l let me okay. finish. Okay. Thanos, for those of you in the Marvel context in the universe, Thanos with the snap, that is where that derivative comes from. Yes, pretty much. Sorry. Okay. I didn't so, mean to overstep you, but okay. I had to throw that in there. Like, that is a pop culture reference that... But, well, he, 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 he recently he crested 30, and he had the... He realized, like, his wife starts... His new wife starts saying, um... Things about like you know, oh haha, you know, '90s kids remember when you know this thing, and kids nowadays don't know what this is that we remember from our childhood, and it's, it really has him. He starts thinking more about how the never-ending abyss is always encroaching. Death is just one mozzarella stick away. So it's called thanatophobia. It's a, it's basically a general fear of death, specifically. But what what kind of leads to uh, like the the realization that wow I'm, it's just I'm starting to think about it more and more and it's kind of becoming this thing apparently most most humans peak in their 20s when it comes to fear of death and then after that it becomes more of like life starts weighing you down with all the other responsibilities and death is more of like a it, it's there the dread is there but it's always like a way in the back and if it's not dread then it's possibly Waiting for sweet, sweet release, but 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 um, what I could kind of cobbling together. I'm 48. My personal experience, and also just what I was able to find was part of it is you start accumulating, you start accumulating relationships, you start accumulating responsibilities and stuff, and death is I I lose all of that. I lose the memories that w w would have been made if I was still alive, and also your you know people you know in your life start dying and you realize that's it i don't get to text them or call them or facetime them or anything i don't get any more stuff so yeah we're going heavy on this one so for you i know you lost your dad a few years ago yeah yeah i did yeah I also lost my grandmother uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I lost my father to Alzheimer's uh, 10 years? I don't remember how many years ago. It's, that's how many. And uh, less, less than 10 for both of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, dad and grandma. And um, mm -hmm. my, my grandfather I lost in 2001 to um, some kind of wicked fucking combination of emphysema, tobacco abuse, <clears throat> eating too much food, drinking too much whole milk. So living life to the fullest. Diluted with ice. Oh. That was who? That was my grandfather. That was Jim. That was James. That was uh, Boo Boo. That was, the, that was the man who gave me all those golf clubs. Oh, right on. It was, it was, my grandfather was a golf pro instructor. And so when I got to go to the course with him, mm -hmm. we drive down in the Ford Focus with the uh, antenna on the roof and with the CB radio. And he would bring in with the other CB drivers. What was his handle? Fuck, I wish I remembered. I did, don't did you ever get on it? No. Oh, okay. No, no. I don't know. No, it was a, it was a very, so it was a very untraditional, like unmovie moment for me. I just feel like, and, like there, I would have put my grandkid on the hand. Here's the thing: there's some like there's some there's some movie moments for me. Mm -hmm. 
and those kind of keep me going. And then there's some like very unmovie moments for me going, oh, this is reality. This is what this feels like. Yeah, reality is boring compared to movie moments. No, reality hurts. That too. And movies feel good. Yeah. And when you when you find movies that feel good, they feel good. The, I, I laughed when you said Ford Focus because uh, my and that big ass stupid uh, white antenna. <laughs> no, you just oh. he would drive around and then he would call out and go, "Hey, just driving up two exits, just moving up two lanes." To who? Kept covering me to the right. Move me over. Oh, to the truckers? Hey, hey, I'm trying to get off on uh, 61st. I'm going to go to the left. Like, I, I remember the calls. So he was he was basically asking the truckers to run... Defense. Yeah, and block and got, form. And, yeah, block and form. Yeah. <sighs> My, yeah, and, and, and I didn't realize it at the moment, but I saw that he was doing football stuff, and I went, this isn't hockey. Like my dad, <laughs> the only sport I had watched was like hockey with dad or curling or like anything on ice, like that required finesse and real, real mitigation as to right. how much ice is left. Meanwhile, grandpa's running football plays with his trucker pals, American football. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back in the way. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Grandpa's, grandpa's grabbing a seven iron and going, 180, 180, 180, 180. And just moving, just like moving his body over and going like, what, 165? No, one Like just moving right. and, and feeling that. And based on where he stood, he knew I'd, I'll get this many yards out of it. just would grip it and rip it like once he once he found the zone right it just that's a man who's played a lot of golf wow the man uh, loved it the, he, he loved it and i got to a point where i was swinging clubs and i just went this feels really good to hit something really fucking hard and know where it's gonna go. Oh, watching that ball take off. I've I've done it. I'm terrible at it, but I've done it and it's No, you just you hear it. You hear that. Oh yeah. Oh. Yep. I, I just right there. Mostly just what I, the mostly what I heard was grass. <laughs> just the Yeah. It's the sound of the club sucking into the fucking blaze just Yep. And it goes up. And it comes down yeah. a single bounce at end of the cup. And well, it just it you lose your fucking mind because it's it's like uh, it's the same thing as taking the geometry test. Okay, wait. Like I hit the what? ball at this. I hit the ball at this velocity. Okay. It comes off at this angle. Uh huh. It goes up. The wind carries it this much. This is all geometry. This is all mathematics. Okay. Which is why I love golf. Because you're just going, oh, no, wind's too high. Don't want to pitch it, won't sand. It goes sand because it goes higher. And with the wind coming at me this way, it's going to carry me back further that way. So I want to hit up and back here because there's an even bank. Like it's it's projecting mm -hmm. all of that little now, minute information. Now, listeners, he hearing him talk about golf completely helps me to understand why the last time I was over Same thing here, when you play pool. The by, the way, oh. by the way, when you play pool, uh, golf players know when you're playing pool and we know you suck. So <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, this explains, you should have seen his, I wish you could see his face, the rapture on his face about talking about geometry and golf, but this explains why the last time I was over here, we played golf uh, on Xbox and he beat me by 17 strokes and I finished one over par and I was feeling good about that. Yes, yes, you're butch man, golf boy. No, but but I no, just, let, let me let me I uh, just like golf. Let me I just I just like golf. I don't I don't buy into any of the the 
supremative bullshit around golf because I know so many people can be so goddamn bad at it. Yeah. Like they, they, they don't understand how f the fucking air velocity works and that will work against you. Yep. It's not all a video game. Some of it is physics and you have to plan ahead and let the air take you where it's going to take you. And I think that's the biggest metaphor for life that we have. Right. Is that sometimes you have to let gravity take you where it's going to take you. And sometimes you got a fucking second shot in a par six from a sand trap. And sometimes you're just on the green a foot away from the hole. You have to take everything to the average of what your scorecard's going to be. That's a good analogy for life in general, I think. Uh, Zach, just to answer. Hopefully, just trying to help you out, bud. Hopefully that answered the question a little bit. And really, I guess I'll, if we're going to tie it up in a nice, neat little bow, incom in comp not comprehensible, uh, <laughs> incomparable, in no, in a, in a nice little package that doesn't cover everything really. Incomprehensible. I would say death is going to happen to all of us, unfortunately. But it's one of those things that all you can really help do is hold on to the memories and try to make as many as you can while you're while you're alive. And focus on what's in front of you. And that... I know I'm going to die at some point. But I know it's not today. But you hope it's not today. But I know it's not today. And it better not be tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. Nice. Because I'll be pissed as shit. <laughs> if I get taken out tomorrow, I will be furious. <laughs> And I will haunt the world. The world you'll be tired. Yes. Oh, I don't give a fuck. I, dude, I don't sleep as is. You think I'm gonna sleep as a ghost? All right. Toast me, you magnificent person. Okay. Well, I didn't say make a toast. I just said no, no, no. I got you. Oh, okay. I got you. May we all find what we want. May all. May we all be what we find. And may we all be what we need. Okay. Need, find. May we all want what we find. Sometimes you don't always get what you want. In the words of Mick Jagger. But honey, want the one you <laughs> get what you need. <laughs> want the one you with. May we be the hero want that the we, we deserve. <laughs> Drink a drink. Mm. But really quick, just to circle back. I laughed when you said focus. Because my my wife's grandmother on her mother's side, very prim and proper, like every meal had the full serving of all the utensils and never, like, would never curse or anything. When she drove a Ford Focus, she called it a Ford Fuckus. It's the whole, most hilarious thing that my wife's mom had ever heard. And to this day, anytime she hears Ford Focus, that's... Can I tell you about the time that my dad most offended my grandmother? Please do. After her stroke? Dare, dare. I dare, I dare. Uh-oh. So dad says. Oh no. As he opens so the refrigerator says, door into his chair. Excuse me. I know what the distance looks like. I, if there's anything I know, it's distance. <laughs> so my dad, There's two kinds of people in this world I can't stand. <laughs> those that are close, and those that are even closer. <laughs> what? It's not the line at all. Anyway, go ahead. No, says, no, I'm just going with people I can't stand. Those that are intolerant of other people's cultures, <laughs> and the Dutch. <laughs> and the Dutch. Anyway, Michael Caine. Uh, Sir Michael, Michael Caine. Go on, you. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Shatter the turtle. Shatter the turtle. So anyway, your dad says. I don't know what the sentence says. I was leading up with. Stroke. Uh, pissed off your mom. Or your, he, how, how did he? Grandma. Uh, grandma, he uh, made, her, made her mad or insulted her or something. I mean, that was a lot of times. For, that's, for that's, fuck that's... us. This is what happens when you try to podcast for while drinking. For fuck us. That's it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So. It's Christmas morning. Oh, no. <laughs> There's the preface. It's Christmas morning. 
I looked down at a gift that my dad had given to me. Oh, no. And I just went, I'm so fucking excited. And I just, it was heartfelt. There was emotion. Oh, you was, said it out loud. Yeah. Oh, I no. said, I'm so fucking excited. I, How old are you? Uh, 21. Okay. Like, I'm old. I'm in, uh, yeah. Okay. Old enough. Old enough. Old enough. I look at my dad and he goes, I'm so fucking excited. I don't know how you did this. I don't know how you got this past me. I don't know how. Were there any little children around? No. Okay. Yeah, totally. No. No. I was just like, I, I don't I, I don't know how you did He genu- genuinely got me. Okay. And it's not often that I get surprised. But he got me. And my grandmother goes, do you have to constantly swear? And my dad turns to me in his big ass chair. And he goes, yeah, you have to fucking swear all the fucking time, you fucking asshole. And it just hit me in a spot, like right in my heart. I would have laughed. I I was so warm (laughs) and so happy. And I went, shut the fuck up. Why are you being such a fucking dick? And he goes, why are you being such a fucking asshole? (laughs) Meanwhile, Grandma's like, oh my God. Oh, you assholes. <laughs> Grandma's going, I never wanted any of this to happen. And we're going, And you shouldn't. Well, you know what? It wasn't this fucking asshole. <laughs> they were just yelling at each uh, other. Oh, man. And then, and then my brother goes, Yeah, you fucking dicks. <laughs> like, so it was just, it was so, it was so, it was such a multitude of. Do you remember where you were the first time you got away with swearing in front of a parent? Go on, come on. He's he's looking mischievous. Mischievous. I'm gonna go with mischievous. Mischievous. Shut up and tell your story. Or I'll, I'll leave with mine. Yours is probably more interesting than mine, though. First time I felt mischievous and uh, was accused of it was when my dad figured out how to look at the history of the internet. Ha! Always using uh, an in- incognito mode wasn't a thing then, right? Erase, what's that old, uh, that like uh, bracelet that no. says delete my browser history? <laughs> oh man. It was like 90. Oh, yeah, you were boned. 98, 99, like, it was right around the turn. And, like, there wasn't any, like, porn movies. It was and all, I like, went, pictures you had to watch download. No, no. When I was coming up, it was clips of full-on, like, 30-minute videos. But if you were crafty enough, you could find the 30-minute videos. Okay. So, you could either watch the two-minute clips or you could watch the full-length videos if you were crafty enough. And I was crafty enough. So, I didn't pay for a lot of nice. things. From but unfortunately, a certain the, the, a certain star, which I will, <clears throat> I promise, I will email this to you this year and apologize. But the browser because history I do didn't, so much. The browser history made it very clear what you were looking at. <laughs> but, it was very clear that I liked older women. But that's not nice. <laughs> Does it, it was very clear that just whatever I was looking at, it was older women. Does does it does it end in ILF? <laughs> he drinks his beer. I see. So question. That's not what I asked though. I said, what was the first time you got away with swearing in front of your parents? Oh, the swearing thing never was a never was a big thing. Ah, you didn't grow up Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grew up Catholic. My dad was a was a Catholic. My mom was a Christian. So when I grew uh, up, what I heard was Carlin Kinnison. Uh, okay. Like, see, anti anti establishment. Right. Mitch Hedberg. Right. So so for them, it, they were just words. Words. But you probably were like you can't say it at school or something. So like that, here's right? the thing. I went through the word stuff when I was, because I was born in 90. 
Uh -huh. So when I'm hearing this stuff, this is these are actually like 82, 83, 84. Okay. And I'm coming up in the 90s, so I'm going, I like Simple Plan and some 41 and... Right, yeah. Okay. And then about... It's not the band that married Alvaro Levine. Anyway, go 2005, ahead. 2005, 2006, I went, I need to get into church and do all this religious stuff. Then I got into Chris Tomlin, Aaron something, something. Okay. Striper! I'm just kidding. Striper rocks, man. Now, about 13, I get into my first metal cover band, and it's Queensryche. Oh, you're actually playing? Yeah. Okay. Queen, no, Ooh. Queensryche. Yes. And I'm singing. Oh, I, ooh, what? Yeah. You're, you're singing Jeff Tate's part. Why? Because I do. Because puberty hadn't hit yet? No, because I do. Okay. Now. Now. Really? Yeah. Why haven't we done a, a Queen's Rock cover band? I do now. Okay. It's... Oh, it's, no. my, it's my wheelhouse. Yeah, no, right there with you, buddy. I, I just, just... I didn't think yeah. that you hit those notes. Now. Okay. It's my wheelhouse. It's what I do comfortably. We're not going to start singing. We're not going to start singing Queens, right? We don't need that trouble. <laughs> Jeff Tate has nothing better to do than to sue us. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We should do. Mm -hmm. Not not an I don't believe in love because that's the one that's done all the time. Spreading the disease. Spreading the disease. The needle lies. Here's what I... Yeah, here, here, yeah. When, I, when I hear Queens like my my I cannot stop it. My brain immediately Mission? goes. I remember. Oh yeah, I, I remember, remember everything. It. Operation Minecraft. Yeah, I don't remember how it started. Operation Minecraft. But also, I always I always like um. Remember making love in the rain. I I his phrasing is always really nice, but. He's, you know, he's a bit of a douche, let's be honest. Dun, 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 dun. Really, let me tell you my first time I got away with swearing in front of my mom. Now, I grew up, my mom, very Catholic at the time. My dad was Methodist. So that was, you know, very separate. Sorry, Methodist is like, Methodist is still one of the ones that kind of throws me because... It's basically because, like a non-thing. Like you, you, Well, no, just like the, the tales I heard of Methodists were... Kind of like hearing about Jews. <laughs> okay, this ought to be interesting. You guys were like mythical goblin creatures. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so to our Jewish shit. listeners. Sorry, <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, like there was a there was a continuity. <laughs> Holy crap, dude! What the hell? Well, at least they're not black, right? Oh. Yeah. I mean, some of you. <laughs> wow. So anyway, but my my mom. I, I, you know, growing up, I, I couldn't swear. I'm the last of five kids. They knew all the tricks. I couldn't get away with anything. I wore hand-me-downs. And I went to a Catholic junior high and a Christian high school. So I wasn't swearing, okay? Not, not out loud, anyway. And we're- In I, your head. Yeah, I can't remember the age, but I was, teen, teen, teen was in the age. So I was a teenager of some sort. Coming out of the ice cream store, and as soon as I came out the door, I guess uh, I stopped or something, and my, my ice cream scoop fell out of the cone right out of the sidewalk. And without thinking, I said, shit. And she just looked at, looked at it, looked at me, and said, shit is right. And then we went back inside and got me more ice cream. I was like, holy crap, I got away with it. Which, when you grow up religious, no, I wasn't, we, we weren't like super, super religious, but when you grow up with in a religious type environment, that's huge. That's like... The acknowledgement. The acknowledgement, yeah, like... You're old enough to make this decision. Because right. she'd been through it before. Right. If I was her first child, I'm sure I would have, oh, I would have been smacked at, le at the very least. I would, I would have gotten yelled at, which is even right. worse. Um, but that was, that's the moment. And, I mean, to this day, my mom's 86. Like, I just saw her last weekend. Uh, uh, she needed help with the computer, and all I had to do was hold the power button down long enough. <laughs> hey, uh, I work in IT. But... <laughs> Uh, For this, a company. But to this day, she'll she has no problem swearing when she needs to in front of me. But I will I won't swear in front of her. But now it's because it's just weird. You're 86. I don't want to swear in front. I of her. swear in front of my mother because 
if I don't swear in front of my mother, she outswears me. <laughs> and I don't. It's not a competition, Sean. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it? Is it a competition? If I don't win, she <laughs> wins. And then the terrorists what, win. <laughs> what, 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 what was your question? If I don't win, win. Yes, she yes. wins. Okay. So, what was your question? For the fuck up. Yes, she is absolutely a terrorist. Is what I was saying from the beginning. Okay. There you go. There's your episode three spoiler. Because we just crossed over. That's... I know, I know. We're I know. on episode four. I know. Okay. Right. Um, real quick. I had a thought and I lost it. Oh, yeah. Well... It, it, in, in a nutshell, give me your elevator pitch. This is me in a nutshell. In your, okay, this is... And we would love to hear from you what your personal theories on this are in the comments. What do you think happens when we die? If you want to get into that. No, you know what? What I what I want to believe. Okay. What I want to believe. Right. Is that if we pass on a positive message, I want you to do things beyond what you thought were your capabilities. And we carry that message forward. We're done. Because then they can carry the message forward. And they can progress. And then you're leaving the world a better place than you thought it was going to be. So you're saying, ideally, yeah. when you die, yep. your legacy, that you, yep. your teachings your, or whatever. Your, your legacy is going to be the perception of what was thought upon you. So I right. hope you invest it well. Okay. That's actually beautiful, man. Thank you, man. That's deeper than I expected from you. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't think no. it was that deep. Um, I you know, it's, it's not uh, a comfortable feeling, somebody thinking that you don't have that big of an emotional dick. But, you know. Wow. You have to, uh, I didn't say anything about genitalia. That, you, you know, you that was talking, last episode. You were, you were talking about my depth. So I had to chime I in. I didn't say anything about girth. You were talking about depth. I didn't say anything about... You were talking about depth. Okay, fine. Thank you. You have a very big emotional dick. I know. Your dick cries at, at movies. and No, it thuds <laughs> on the table and it shakes your footing. <laughs> My... I should have got earthquake insurance. <laughs> I got more. I got more. I got more. I know I got more. I know. <laughs> My emotional digging will shake the table and the foundation of this home. It will also shake the foundation of this building because I declare it so. <laughs> don't don't argue with me. I still got, I still got room to grow. No, no, no right. shut up. And one shut up. Off. I know it's the joke. It's the joke. I just gotta carry it through. I gotta shoulder the responsibility of the joke. <laughs> Plus, like, I have to shoulder the responsibility uh, in the dick. You. I hate it. You bemuse me, sir. Oh, I hate it. Okay. It's such a duality. I'm going to talk now, okay? Oh, please do. <laughs> please do. God damn it. What I think happens when we die uh, has changed a lot over the decades. Growing up religious, of course, mm. there was all that... Uh, doctrine and indoctrination and stuff, and this is not the place for to really debate that with anybody. This Theology. Is, this is more of just a, an open kind of thing. Like, yeah, here's what I kind of feel. Um, I've since moved somewhere between atheist and, and agnostic, and we can. That's a whole other episode of, of where did that come from. But suffice it to say, my wife and I are donating our bodies to science. Um, because we feel like science is the only way forward, especially after the last four years. And we just, it's one of those things like everybody dies and I refuse to believe that I wasn't good enough in my life or you know, I didn't treat people well enough mm. when all I've ever tried to do is not make it worse. Take, take care of other people and yes. leave the world a better place than you found it. Right. But if you're, you know, if, if 
if you live under the fear of of some omnipotent being judging you and saying, "No, you didn't do X, Y, Z correct," <laughs> then how can you live in a way that helps other people if you're constantly afraid of that? That's kind of where I'm at. This might be the whiskey talking, but I love you, man. But also, yeah, I know. I let's move away from death, shall we? I would hope so. I would hope so too. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about shoes. How's that for out of left field? Well, all shoes hurt me. All shoes hurt you? Yeah. You don't have any pair that's like, this is my comfy? No. no. Okay. No. No, I don't. No. No. Is that? I'm going to preemptively answer your question and go okay. with no. Okay. Yeah. I'm also going to say, you know where I, I think you would, no. Here's, no, they all suck. Here's my only interest. As I told you before, I used to manage a shoe store. I was Al Bundy for a while, and I, I got really good at- I would trust Al Bundy. Thanks. I would, I would give him all the money I had. Well, I actually- came in. I actually got really good at helping people find the right shoes, but I'm not here to do that for you. What I'm curious is, what do you do when you drum? What, what shoes do you, do you- do you have certain shoes you wear at gigs to drum? Or do you drum- I know you don't drum barefoot, because of- We've been in a band together more than once, so. What I like to do mm -hmm. is I like to wear dress shoes. I have, I've noticed that when you dress play drums. Shoes, dress shoes have thin soles. Oh, for feel? Okay. And when you have thin soles, you can feel the pedals under your feet. Right. And I play with three pedals. So I like to feel all the different contours and different textures going on in my left foot. Okay. Because it inspires my left foot to be more creative. If I don't feel that creativity, it feels like a block. It feels like a weight. It feels like a club. It feels like a bam bam dragging the fucking thing right. with the the Flintstones, right? right? Right. I think I've told you something like that, uh, kind of similar with me when I've come to do a drum lesson with you and I'm wearing shoes. Yeah. Versus at home, you're, you're drumming barefoot at home a lot of times. Right? Because... No. Well, I have been. No. I prefer to play in shoes. Hmm. I always prefer to play in shoes. Maybe I need to start doing I just... I also... I, I... I've been the same shoes for 13 years. I need to go get new shoes. You look so sad. You do. I, I need to go get new shoes. Well, if you need any advice, let me know. I used to sell... I your... don't... I don't... I don't... I don't know what I'm going to go look for when I go to Skechers. Right. I just... Skechers? I, yeah. It's right across the street. There's nothing wrong with Skechers if that's... It's just, it's depending right on what street. your needs are, but yeah. I mean, I used to sell European comfort shoes. So like I, Echoes I, and Clarks and, and Joseph Seibel's and Mephisto's. $200, $250 shoes. Yeah, and Clarks I wore. And they're, you know, and they're amazing, but I'm currently wearing shoes I spent 10 bucks at Walmart for. But that's what I'm saying is like, I just want... Something that's gonna be comfortable, right? And I can also see why you wear the dress shoes for drumming. Uh, you feel a little better arch support with them. No, I feel a tighter fit. Okay, granted. I mean, and dress shoes by their but, nature are not designed thing, to be baggy but, or loose. But the thing is, when I wear dress shoes mm -hmm. and I wear tight fit shoes, right, it compresses my archway, and I sacrifice the comfort of my archway. Okay, and I shouldn't. And I hmm. do. How much, how much time in a given day would you spend barefoot? Just when you're sleeping? If, what am I doing? Well, just a given day, drumming is involved at some point in the day. I don't, I don't drum barefoot. I put shoes on, well, I what, put socks on. Well, what I mean, it, like, you're wearing shoes now. Yeah. Did you wear shoes all day? Yeah. And have you ever gone just like an entire day barefoot? Yeah, it's uncomfortable as fuck. That's what I thought. You might have fallen arches. Because if your arches are flat or, you know, not where they nor where they might be, and you go barefoot for a while, they're going to hurt, and then you wear shoes and you're going to be like, they hurt because I have the support all of a sudden, or I have the support I 
My foot doesn't want, but uh, I I know what my foot needs. What does your foot need? Our support. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm a flat foot fucking Irishman. <laughs> like I I don't know how to argue any more of this. Like yeah, that's flat foot Irishman. Right. Now here's I wonder how much of that is because of all the years of drumming. But oh, he's he's down to socks, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? If I don't want shoes anymore, yeah. If I throw the shoes out, I don't have to wear them again. Right on. Right. Right. Well, thanks for uh, telling me that. I appreciate it. Anything you want to throw at the people? Anything you want to talk about? Any category you want to? delve into we've recently we've been talking about like some comic book stuff and movie stuff and whiskey this amazing whiskey from Frey Ranch or Fry Ranch um I'm, I'm gonna go a little weird uh oh this, this, oh, no. may, this may throw you off uh WandaVision fans okay I haven't watched any of it but I'm I've been keeping up on the social media stuff so I'm a little aware WandaVision fans is there a Mephisto storyline brewing? Because oh. because if there is Mephisto, if there is... I hate that asshole. If there is this little intrinsic value of controlling nether realms because she's a nexus being. Right. So she has access to all of the multiverse. Right. Hopefully it's a good thing, but I kind of want it. So you say Mephisto? I, yeah. My brain immediately goes to, go to the Galactus Spider-Man having to sacrifice his whole marriage to Mary Jane. The the new uh, trailer dropped today for, for Spider-Man. For what? For for the next Spider-Man movie. What's it called? No No Go Home. Nothing home, something like that. Well, because it, before it was away from home or, or, or uh, no. far from home. No, no, it's like no, Is no. It still Tom Holland. No, yeah, no escape home. He's or something growing like that. on me as a Spider-Man. Yeah, I'll yeah. be. I'll be honest. But here's the I was, thing: I they're, was they're trying to introduce that Spider-Verse stuff to it. Okay, so basically, live action, like or we're 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 merging the live action and the the cartoon uh, into the Spider Verse, that, which was really good, by the way. Uh, so each one of them, Tom Tom Holland, mm -hmm. uh, the other guy. Oh, are you saying they're bringing back some of the like Tobey Maguire and stuff? So hold on, that's the multiverse theory. Okay. And then beyond that, you have the. As long the, as they don't bring back the. You have the group of six. As long as they don't so bring back you're the talking. terrible dancing Toby Maguire. <laughs> this, oh, the Sinister Six. Ooh, that's Ooh. that's that that's the next theory. Can I show you the thing? Can I? Can we? Can we? Well, after cut? after this. After no, this. no, no, no. Oh fuck out. No, Patience, Padawan. I I have some things to show him. Oh no! And I don't want you people to know. Can I keep my pants on? <laughs> keep your shirt on. Not right now. Please. No. All right. God damn it! All right. All right. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and I think cut it off there. But we do want to say thank you for no, listening. No, we're not. No, we're, we're not. We're not. We got we got seven minutes. We can make this an hour. Oh, okay then. Um, real quick, just to recap, Zach, death happens to all of us. I know that you're thinking about it more and more, but it can, it can, death can happen to all of us. It will happen to all of us. It can. What? What's the alternative? Cryogenics. Oh. Mr. House. <laughs> If you want to go cryogenics, yeah, I guess. Okay, but like Zach, I, it, it's a shit reality to go through. But yeah, you know what? I'm not trying to offer you good substitutions. I'm just saying these are substitutions. Anywho, anywhere, Zach. Anyhow, I, any person, hang in there, and you're gonna come out the other end of, of this whole thinking more and more about death thing. Uh, eventually, you'll you'll reach. The, the level of it's going to happen, but I've got other things to worry about right now. I've got other things to think about. 
And uh, as my boss, because he's my boss. Yeah, don't worry about death. Uh, I'm sure that we're gonna give you so much other thing, so many other things to think about. <laughs> but other than that, you there. What are you looking forward to on this trip? He's going to Kansas City. The fulfillment of fantasies. Of what? Fantasies. Oh my. Yeah. Wait, what, what, what are you doing? Things. Things with people. Things with people. Like, you know what? If you if you want to stick around, if you want to <laughs> hear about them. Oh no. I guess you will have to hang around. Uh, we're can't, gonna, give, can't give you too next, much detail. Next episode, we're going to hear about his can't after his trip. Detail. Yeah, he's a comeback. So. Well, my comeback, my come front, my come face, my come. <laughs> what? Oh, that's there right. it is. The, there it the is. penny drops, the sh there other shoe hits the floor. Right. I'm so sorry. Well, we'll say hi for me. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Yes. And I hope but, I hope everything comes out okay. <laughs> so do I. Oh, she's going to kill you when she hears this. <laughs> you know, she's not going to hear this. Probably not. But that's okay. The important thing is you all are listening to this. And we just want to say thank you. I will tell you what. I will appreciate a um, sensitivity clause. Because we're still at 56 minutes, 50 seconds. We're trying to give you a we're full not, hour. We're yet. not there at a full hour yet. Yeah, we're trying to give you as close to an hour as possible. But I'm trying to talk to you and trying to help you. Okay. Pop quiz, hot shot. Let's go. Oh, can you go into your notes? What do you What do you have for your notes? That was it. Oh, death, thanatophobia. Death and death. Death and intensity. Yes, we we that was it, man. Um, I have board games up there for for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I have card games here too. No, I had a question for you actually. I'm waiting on the question. We I mean, keep talking. Ask the question. Okay. What do you think is Batman's biggest flaw? Not Bruce Wayne's, but Batman's. So as a, as a separate entity, a, separate, a superhero, what's his biggest flaw? That's a good one. That's a good one. For me, I think it's the obsessive nature that that just blinds him mm -hmm. to the danger he puts these yeah. these kids into, and 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 also the fact that at this point in the game, it very well may be his existence is creating more supervillains. I'm not saying he should be killing them. Now, as a, as a comic itself, I find it ridiculously ludicrous that nobody is able to figure out who he is based on, like, all the... Joker knew. Well, yeah, many, there, many people through the years have figured it out or, or knew. But I'm just saying, like, Commissioner Gordon, they don't want to They don't want to know. Because all they got to do is look at this and be like, this guy must have money. And, like, who's the, who's the one person rich enough that we... And we never see him... <laughs> And, you know... Why are you sticking up so much for the Joker? I'm not. I'm talking about Batman. Joker's the hero. Joker actually Joker's realizes he's hero. in a comic. No, Joker's the hero. Uh, except for the whole killing thing. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So now <laughs> we get into necessary deaths. Joker kills more than necessary people. Does he though? Now I'm not going to get into the. No, now we're oh. turning. Oh. Now we're turning. 
Oh, I'm, this is so good. I'm not Now gonna... we've turned the chairs to face each other because we want to have this discussion. Now listen here, you little shit. <laughs> I'm not going to say... All right, come on, nugget, let's go. Yeah, I'm not going to go down... The... <laughs> You're not fucking with me. I'm, that I'm not going to go down the road of, well, he's got henchmen because, you know, he's no. a villain. Because Batman's got henchmen, let's yeah. be honest. And it's not even just the Robins. They're not... It's, it's all the others. But, yes. My f- deal with... The Joker... In my opinion, number one, he knows he's in a comic. That's been established. He's it's like Deadpool. He breaking the fourth. Yeah, he he's done that. Right. He also knows that he's a little insane. He knows he's a little bit crazy. How I, do you how do you feel about the Mark Hamill Joker? I mean, you can't give me a thumbs up. I can give you a, a thumbs. Really? I can at least give you a thumbs sideways, like. I want to swing a chair against your head. Why? Because Mark Hamill is the Mark Hamill's the voice. voice. Some when it, but when it comes, if you're talking Whoa. about Joker and Harley, some of the most messed not up Harley. things Joker. Not, no, no, no. Uh, but, just, just, uh, but some of the most messed up things Joker did to Harley, Mark Hamill voiced that Joker. But that's worth the writing, not the right. But yeah, not the performance. But it was it was the writing. I mean, if you want to talk movies, it, for me, it's always the first two. It's always Michael Keaton's Batman and, and Jack, Dan, uh, Nick Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Danielson. Jack Nicholson's. Uh, <laughs> Jack Daniels is the Joker. Ah, uh, well, we see where the influence comes from. Um. <laughs> but, I mean, that. I can see why Tim Burton wanted, didn't want to do a third one. Yeah, and then we went into the dark. I don't like the Tim Burton inclusion. I think he could have been left out. The thing I liked about the first Batman movie is, think about the movie posters. All you saw was the bat symbol on the chest. That was it. And it, it really was like, well, I know what it's about, but I want to know more. You didn't see any commercials. When you, when you, you saw see. the black symbol on the chest, yeah. where did that go? Dum, 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 dum. Love that. Love that theme. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. Nah! Dum, And it was just like, it was too slow, and you went, Come on, get out of the compartment! <laughs> no. Dum, 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 When I walked out of the first Batman movie, my only yeah. thought, my only thing I said was, I was hoping for more, a little more acrobatic type stuff, more of the things you expect from Batman, the peak of human physicality. I expect a little bit more of that, and his fighting style right. was very efficient. But at the same time, yeah, yeah, at the same time, I was like, if I was wearing that suit, that's how I'd have to fight too. <laughs> but like a lot of the, the comedy and it, like, and Bat- his smile, the, that meme of Batman's smile, you're just like, oh my god. That's it. Michael Keaton nailed it. And then he goes on to be the vulture. But, you know. <laughs> live long enough. Like you do. You live Tennessee. long enough. You, yeah, you get to... You, you, was it... Um, live long enough to, as a hero, you get you, you become a villain? Something like that. You live long enough to become the hero that you see yourself become the villain. Something like that. But... We need. We actually do need to say goodbye now. It is that time. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. We, we do. got. We got about two more minutes. Two more minutes. What are we gonna talk about for two more minutes, Sean? Gonorrhea. How big of a fan were you over one whiskey, as opposed to how many whiskeys you had in in the previous life? So far, like you, you've been you've been exposed, quote unquote, exposed, mm-hmm. like moment of day of things like that, right? To whiskey, yeah. So where does this strike you? The fry, the fry ranch, the fry ranch, yeah. Where <sighs> did, where does it? Oh, where does is... it hit you on the on the scale of goodness? On <laughs> that's a very subjective term, but well, yes. you know, I'm trying to come up with more no, 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 things no. for you. <laughs> Scale this, of goodness, I think, would work. This well is, for you. oh no, I think you you nailed it. Two Glen Cairns way up. This is my favorite bourbon for sure I've ever had, even over Evan Williams, which I've always espoused a love for. 
This, this has so much going for it and none of it has been bad. We've enjoyed it. And, and even as time went by, we're like, oh, wow, oh, wow, 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 what is this? Right. Um, for, for in, in whiskey and in, overall, I'm, there's some scotches I like better just because scotch is scotch and bourbon is bourbon. I wouldn't expect you to like a, a like a scotch, but well, you said find, you. finding the finding the comparison as to what you like versus what you don't like, and finding what you like in this is right. is a is a nice journey. Let me put it this way: it has been a while since you and I shared a whiskey of, of any sort that I bought, where we both sh couldn't shut up about how great it was. And I'm looking forward to taking it home. And I'm hoping you'll be lucky enough to have any the next time I come visit. The next time. You mean in uh, 17 days time. How long are you there for? Not 17 days time. I was going to say. I'm there until uh, Monday. And then I come back Monday at like 5 something. But I also, when I come back at 5 something, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't have my cat. Meow. I don't have any weed. <laughs> so Tuesday is going to be the the day for me. Right on. Well, in the meantime, thanks for listening and for sponsoring the channel. Thank you for sticking around because, wow, do you have patience. Yeah, but also... My goodness. If you want to hear us talk about anything that you are curious about, please hit us up, two brains, one bottle at gmail.com. And if you're curious about anything that uh, we weren't subjective about or you have opinions i i would be sorry but i'm not <laughs> but in the meantime thanks for listening remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time on two brains one bottle podcast and hopefully over in room six the youtube channel uh but